We didn't have to travel far before we came across tribal elder Chris Morganroth III. In the Quileute language, that means my name is Dawasim. Name was given to me in 1945 by my grandmother. I have a song for you. It is uh, the creation song that the song came from my heart and nobody has ever sung this song besides myself. And it's, uh, as I said, it's a creation song of where the Quileutes came from, from the wolf. Originally, when Kwati was put on the face of the earth, he was put on the face of the earth as a transformer, not a kind of a god that could create things. He was not a creator. He was a, the transformer or the changer. And he was put on the earth to make things better for the people and to make things better for all the living things that are in this area. Kudayak was just a place. And uh, there's a beautiful lake there called Lake Quinault. When he got down to the Quinault, there was no people there. And he looked down into the lake, and the lake was just a beautiful, clear piece of water, deep and wide and just colorless. And he saw that there was no life in that water. So he put his, his hands in that, into that lake. And when he put his hands into the lake, he brought his hands back out and rubbed his hands back and forth like this until he had a layer of dead skin rolling in his hands. And he put his hands back into the water and waved his hands like this, and the dead skin came off. And with a wave of his hand, that dead skin became the, the sockeye, or the blueback, as we well know uh, as uh, that species of fish. And uh, he saw to it that the Quinault people had a great abundance of the, of the sockeye. And he moved to the place called Kutleos, which is where we are on the beach today. He went to the mouth of the river and he noticed the beauty of the place. There were wolves, timber wolves. And the timber wolves always traveled in pairs, male and female, and they mate for life. And what he did was he, he saw that there were no people. So he made sure that there were people here. He transformed those two, that pair of wolves into the Kuliut people. So that's where the Kuliut people originated from, was from the wolf. Our people didn't only live here in this area. We had at least five different pieces of land that were always kept clear by fire. And the biggest portion of the Kuliut tribe was at a place called Forks today. The prairie there was kept wide open by the Kuliut people. The land was very important to them because all their quality of life came from the land. And so that, that this land is known as Tsikati, and that means the land and all there is therein. There are only five elders who speak the Quileute language fluently. Up next, we'll head back to First Beach to learn more about this difficult dialect. Twilight Spotlight, I'm Naiba Reynoso, and we're taking a closer look at the Quileute tribe. Our tour through La Push has shown us a culturally rich community that is proud of their ancestry and heritage. Though few speak it fluently today, the tribal language is being revitalized in the schools and is honored among the elders. Well, the Quileute language is, is uh, known as an isolate. In other words, there isn't any other tribe on the face of this earth or any other group of people that speak the Quileute language. I'm one of very few that can speak it, read it, write it, spell it. The other four or five that are still remaining speak the language very well. But the problem was when at the turn of the century, when the, the white people came to this area, they built schools. And the, the people that were here were pretty much forced to go to a school to learn the ways of the Europeans. They eventually became English speaking and English became the first language. The Quileute language is no longer a first language, and I wish it was. I have a very strong belief that once a tribe loses its language, it loses its identity. A lot of our native languages have been taken away. A lot of them have passed because 
uh, when the elders were in residential schools, they were told not to speak their language. And if they were, they were beaten or and mistreated. And, and um, so they didn't pass it on to that generation. It's slowly starting to come back. It's slowly starting to reconnect. The language is a, is a hard language to teach, but if you, if you start learning it from the time you're very young, you can learn all the different nuances, the different sounds. Go to these elders that, that still know how and uh, learn it if you can. My favorite way of saying thank you is koda sestalich, which means you did me good. But not many people are taught that particular word. The other is watulish as osto, which means thank you from here. But when I add to or watulish as osto, that means thank you to all of you. And thank you. Now that's all from La Push, Washington. For more information on the Kuluyut Nation, you can log on to www.reelschannel.com slash Twilight Spotlight. I'm Naibe Reynoso. I'll see you next time, but I'm going to leave you with the sunset at First Beach. Oh, oh.